right. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Patrick. Uh, and thank you all so very much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. I am Congresswoman Ann Wagner, and I represent Missouri's second congressional district. And as a woman of deep faith, I am so blessed to be here once again. And I'm grateful to share with you some of my most precious priorities in Congress. I take seriously my sacred responsibility as an elected official to be a voice for the voiceless and fight for those who cannot defend themselves. Being a voice for the voiceless begins with speaking out for those who literally can't speak, our precious unborn. After all, Abortion takes a human life, and life is one of our most sacred, God-given, unalienable rights. In fact, I've been fighting to protect life my entire time in Congress and as a committed pro-life advocate well before then. I've been blessed and honored to champion the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Legislation that would protect the innocent lives of children at their most vulnerable moment. The Born Alive Act simply mandates life-saving medical care for babies who survive abortions. That's it. Just making sure that babies who are born alive receive the same medical care any other patient would get. You'd think that would be single. Easy. Every single American should be for that. I sure did when I introduced this common sense bill. And yet, you would not believe the pushback that I got from radical Democrats. What kind of person, I asked you, doesn't believe a baby born alive, regardless of the circumstance, shouldn't receive life-saving medical care. And even worse, House Democrats will not let it come to the floor for a vote. I believe that voters should know how their members of Congress stand on the sanctity of life. <laughs> this is the simplest choice any of us can make. Do you support babies receiving life-saving care after they are born? Or would you deny these innocent children that care and allow them to be discarded and killed? I think you know my answer. We support life. <laughs> That's why I'm pushing what's called a discharge petition to force a vote on this important legislation. If a majority of the House signs this petition, we will force Nancy Pelosi to put the Born Alive Act on the floor for a vote. We are so close, so close to getting the signatures that we need. Just a handful more. And we will be one step closer to enshrining these critical protections for infants into law. So, I hope that you will join me and urge Congress to vote to protect life. Another issue that I've championed in Congress, as Patrick mentioned, uh, is the ongoing fight against human trafficking and the exploitation of women and children. We have made tremendous progress in recent years against modern-day slave trade. Getting my legislation, the Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, or FOSTA, signed into law a couple of years ago was a monumental task and has profoundly disrupted the online sex trade. But as the only lawmaker who has ever successfully amended Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, there is more work that we need to do. Have you seen what's happening at our southern border? 
It is a disaster. I know. I went there. Unlike Vice President Harris. And the biggest disaster is that the Biden-Harris immigration policies are allowing thousands of women and children to be trafficked across the border and sold into slavery. The vice president should go and see this tragedy for herself. And maybe then they would take action. It's very simple. Go back to the remain in Mexico policy and build President Trump's wall. The pandemic uh, has made trafficking and sexual and domestic violence worse. And I am gravely concerned that children and increased vulnerable and exploitation and abuse, we've seen it. With our kids isolated and online, Predators have ramped up their activities. They must be held accountable and brought to justice. <laughs> Finally, I want to talk about an issue near and dear to my heart, which is Israel. In Congress, I've been a strong defender of Israel and have been one of the primary authors of the legislation to stop the BDS movement against Israel as well as working to enshrine Israel, make sure that, ensure that Israel has the support it needs to stand up to hostile nations bent on its destruction. Let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. Anti-Semitism has no place in America or the world. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. And while the historic Abraham Accords negoti no, negotiated by the Trump administration have helped Israel engage in economic trade with its regional neighbors for the first time ever, much more can be done to support our greatest ally in the Middle East, Israel. And I was so proud. Weren't you proud of President Trump for finally moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem? Finally! A president made good on their promise. I will say the recent rocket attacks fired on Israeli citizens shocked and horrified us all. Indiscriminate attacks on civilians are the very essence of terrorism. And we are at a critical moment in time where Israel, facing existential threats on multiple fronts, desperately needs our support. We must be clear about this very simple fact. Israel has the right to defend itself, especially in the wake of brutal terror attacks. They have the right to defend themselves. And it pains me to see politicians making excuses for Hamas terrorists and helping perpetuate the cycle of terror too many civilians have become accustomed to in the Middle East. That support for Israel is why I voted to send emergency assistance to go towards the Iron Dome, a defense system that saves lives, countless lives in Israel from attacks by Hamas terrorists and Iranian financial backers. Whatever we can do to stop these missile attacks against the Israeli people must be done. But attacks on Israel and the Jewish people don't come solely from rockets and missiles. Too often, right here in the United States, anti-Semitic and dangerous comments are shared by people who should know better. In fact, just last week, Congresswoman Omar compared Israel and the United States to terrorist groups Hamas and the Taliban. What 
an outrage. And AOC and the squad defended her. Comments like these should never be uttered aloud in the halls of Congress, let alone by any American elected official. Bigotry and hatred against the Israeli people and our own country is truly despicable and should be condemned loudly by all freedom-loving peoples. We unequivocally stand with our allies and condemn bigotry in all its forms. I was so incredibly disappointed to see politicians speaking out against Israel when its citizens were under attack, especially when so many we've seen have so many anti-Semitic attacks have even occurred in the United States of America. Our Jewish communities have experienced too much hatred towards them, and I will continue to speak out against the bigoted acts perpetrated by and against them. Israel and the Jewish people should never question the support of America. You can be confident. I will ev never, ever stop fighting for your rights in Congress and for the human rights of all, especially the unborn. I am proud to be that voice for the voiceless and a fighter on behalf of victims in need. I thank you and God bless.